I'm Nadia Ely and welcome to today's discussion about Dominion Energy's Rural Broadband Initiative. We've created this podcast to showcase grid resiliency's programs while featuring top leaders and subject matter experts who highlight the strides it's making. In this episode, Director of Rural Broadband David Walker, Manager of Rural Broadband Matthew Hartwell, and Rural Broadband Project Manager Chauncey Dallas explain the importance of this program and how accessibility and reliability bring a crucial resource to our customers while shoring up the grid of the future. David, what is Dominion Energy Virginia's role in the Rural Broadband program today? Thanks, Nadia. First, I just want to thank you for having our team on to discuss the program. And it's also important as we start, it's worth noting that Dominion Energy is not an internet service provider or an ISP. And with that, I'll I'll mention a few critical points. So there are a lot of nuances to the broadband program, but as we work to modernize our grid, there is also an opportunity to drive down the overall cost of broadband infrastructure projects that have historically been unreasonable when considering cost and the number of potential customers for an ISP. And as a result, through our broadband program, we partner with local jurisdictions and ISP companies to identify and build middle mile fiber routes to help reach unserved customers in the Commonwealth. We are doing so by leveraging our existing overhead distribution facilities where we're installing fiber for grid benefit, but also leasing fiber strands to our partnering ISPs. These ISPs then connect to our middle mile by building last mile fiber construction to serve the unserved homes and businesses. In short, the company is playing a vital role in connecting communities across the Commonwealth by deploying a middle mile fiber network. Matt, can you discuss how the program is working to make the grid more reliable and primed for the grid of the future? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nadia. It's really no secret that the utility landscape is is changing. And, you know, if you think about what's really driving that change, it's customer expectations service we provide is is really no longer being just compared to other peer utilities, but, you know, we're being held up against the Amazons, the Ikeas, the companies that are known for excellent customer experience. This really means our grid must support the secure, uh, reliable, timely delivery of electricity and other services in the way that customers expect it. We believe the foundation to unlocking the grid's potential lies in communications. And so we're installing fiber, connecting substations and field assets Uh, That will allow for the smart cities, allow for the expected drastic increase of renewables across our generation fleet. If you think about CVAL and solar, allow for the complex automated switching schemes and and redundancy that's expected, help facilitate increased data analytics to help us make fast, financially responsible decisions and so on. Really, so the grid of the future is an exciting premise because even though we're so early on in the journey, we're already starting to see progress in some of those areas. As, as it relates to sinking substations and field assets, again, very much dependent on having an internal fiber network in place. So that's kind of one side of the coin, if you will. And the other is in parallel, we're able to lease out excess fiber to help bridge the digital divide uh, that David alluded to, uh, which is really icing on the cake. Great points, Matt. David had mentioned that that critical middle mile fiber optic cable. And Chauncey, I'm going to ask you to kind of discuss how important that is for ISPs and how they'll use that to extend service into these underserved communities. So as Matt and David both mentioned, Dominion Energy and our municipality partners are working with the local internet providers to bridge the digital divide. Dominion will install the middle mile fiber along our existing electric distribution lines and partnering with the ISPs will install the last mile. They'll install the last mile to reach the unserved rural communities. So that way our communities will be able to access things such as um, school, uh, working two way communication, um, as well as doctor's appointments, things that some of our communities were missing out on because they did not have it. I just want to piggyback on what, what Chauncey is referencing, and it's worth noting there, and I know I mentioned it before, a lot of nuances and complexities to the program, but really what we're doing as a as a part of the business from a rural broadband team perspective, there's also a lot of other underlying support and partnerships that we have even internal to the company when we think about supply chain, resource management, design, joint use. So really want to just take a moment to 
to thank all of those business partners who are helping our program be successful for the company. Matt, I'm going to circle back to you and let's talk about the challenges that you're experiencing as the program's initiatives continue to make ground and and how you're using innovative ways to address those. Chauncey, I'm also going to invite you to discuss what your experience has been in that arena as well. Yeah, thank you, Nadia. So as the old adage goes, building the plane as we're flying, that's very much true for our program as it is with many across um, the distribution fleet. And at this point in the program, we're very heavily focused on process improvement and efficiency. Um, some of the macro level headwinds that we're working through include, you know, a dynamic labor market that everyone's experiencing. You know, obviously combine that with inflation, supply chain constraints, and just really the sheer volume of make ready work that has to take place in a very compressed timeline. And all of those factors and, and many more, you know, drastically affect our, our cost per mile that we're able to achieve on these projects. Now, if you think of it in the same realm is the data analytics initiative that's happening through Envision Tomorrow at the enterprise level. We're heavily focused on unlocking data to help us drive efficiency. And so just a couple examples of that. We've developed a, a broadband specific platform called BITS, the broadband information tracking system that streamlines a lot of the upfront processes during the scoping phase, creates a central repository for all of our project data. We're working with several consultants to develop some new tools and new views that create real-time views on a GIS platform all the way down to an individual work request where a user can look at various attributes such as the financials and and project progress. We're in the very early stages of working on a mobile app that could potentially facilitate crew progress reporting in the field. Again, heavily focused on efficiency there to gain better insights to help us create accurate forecasts and, and accountability with the services that we've contracted out. We're also thinking forward in terms of fiber outages and how we'll coordinate between an ISP in the future. There's a lot of communication and information that needs to go back and forth between our regional operating centers, our network operating centers, and ISP. And kind of the result of that is a self-service platform through ServiceNow where uh, an ISP will be able to initiate outage tickets, you know, mitigating some of those communication gaps and, and unnecessary extended outages. Uh, so in summary, we're always going to be working through some of those macro headwinds I mentioned, but by employing technology that supports unlocking data, you know, we're able to to better control what we can control and tackle some of the challenges we face in broadband. And again, no different than what we're see- seeking at a, an enterprise level across the median energy through the data analytics initiative. And I'll just piggyback on that. We're also developing best practices internally as we collaborate with our design and construction teams. We've developed and are improving on a fiber manual with respect to design and construction practices. For example, we are fitting out new ideas to also drive what David mentioned earlier, costs for our customers. And that includes allowing our ISPs or internet service providers to attach their splicing containers to our poles, which in turn will expand on our partnerships and even further provide a premier experience for our customers. All the things that have been shared from from Chauncey and Matt are very insightful. And I think it's important to note that that we as a company are very proud to be part of this, have this program and be part of what we're doing in a community because the need for internet, it's clear that that's an essential service for all the things that have already been pointed out. So the fact that we can be part of that and help move that needle and connect customers, even though we're not the ISP, we, we feel very proud and and look forward to making progress as we're continuing to do. Thank you for adding that, David. The inclusivity and connectivity seems to be such an important component of this program. So thank you for highlighting that. For the last question, I'm going to direct it to the whole panel. Let's talk a little bit more about the benefits to our customers through this initiative and how we're evolving and using innovation to better serve them as part of the program. Matt and Chauncey, I welcome your thoughts as well. Yeah, so it's important to note, and I know I've said it a couple of times, that that we are not an ISP, but we're helping these internet service providing companies connect end-use customers. So from an innovation perspective, the creativity to come up with this program was very thoughtful. We actually did a feasibility study back in 2018 and even considered, should Dominion Energy be an internet company, which we landed with a different model. But that just shows that there's a willingness to evaluate, adapt, and move forward. And then if you think about the need, as mentioned already, for internet service, Chauncey hit it on several things. 
remote work, telemedicine, education, all of those things are just vitally important for communities. So those things are where we see tremendous value, not only to industry across the state, businesses across the state and those communities we serve, but more importantly, many of those that are leveraging the middle mile are also Dominion Energy customers. I thought David summed it up very well. Some of the the key things that stick out to me with this program, you know, everything is in the timing, right? You had a, I'll call it a political environment that was very supportive of broadband and and still is at both the state and federal level. Uh, You had the the foresight that David mentioned from our company to get involved and and become a a piece of that equation as it relates to the the middle mile. And then you had these ISPs that a lot of them are internal companies to co-ops that were all in the right place at the right time and, and looking to be part of the solution. And so when you put all those things together, it really is kind of remarkable if you think about what's truly happening right now as it relates to taking something that was completely unfeasible in the past and made no no sense from a business perspective. No one's going to get in business to to lose money that way and combine, you know, the right partners together to now create a win-win for, you know, not only our direct Dominion customers based on grid improvements like we talked about earlier, but also the ability to get internet. And that's something that's no longer a nice to have. It's a, an expectation like Chauncey and Dave allude to. There's just, you know, a lot of benefits for our customers overall. So really a neat time to be be involved in a business like this. Yeah, it really is a, a special program. Just to think about the digital divide and, and what happened over the course of the last couple of years. I mean, Working through this program, I've heard stories where, you know, children had to go to a local restaurant to use their hotspot just to be able to go to school. So to be able to be a part of a program that helps bridge that is truly special for me. All great points. And Chauncey, thank you for sharing that personal story. Any final points, David, Matt or Chauncey, before we close today? I probably didn't list all the groups who are helping our team be successful, but really would be remiss without thanking those individuals across our business. And we also we work with with vendors as well. But from an internal perspective, just appreciate all the support, conversation, dialogue that we have with with various teams across Dominion Energy Virginia. So thank you. I'd like to thank David Walker, Chauncey Dallas, and Matt Hartwell for their expertise and insights. Learn more at dominionenergy.com slash rural broadband. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes. I'm Nadia Ely.